Greetings and welcome to the Applied UV fourth quarter and year end 2022 financial results conference call. At this time, all participants are in a listen only mode and a question and answer session will follow the formal presentation. If anyone should require operator assistance during the conference, please press star zero on your telephone keypad. Please note this conference is being recorded. I will now turn the conference over to your host, Brett Mass of Hayden IR. You may begin. Thank you. Once again, welcome to Applied UV's 2022 earnings call. With me today on the call are Max Munn, founder and CEO, president and director, Mike Riccio, chief financial officer, and Brian Stern, president of Puro Lighting. As a reminder, all materials for today's live presentation are available on the company's investor relations website at AppliedUV.com. Sorry, let's say it again, AppliedUVInc.com. Before we begin, please take a moment to read the forward-looking statements in our earnings press release. During today's call, we'll make certain predictive statements that reflect our current view about future performance and financial results. We base these statements on certain assumptions and expectations on future events that are subject to risks and uncertainties. Our most recent Form 10-K lists some of the most important risk factors that could cause actual results to differ from our predictions. With that, I'll turn the call over to Max Munn. Max, the floor is yours. Thank you, Brett, and good morning, everyone. My name is Max Munn. I'm the founder of Applied UV, and I became the CEO about three weeks ago. As it was for most other companies, 2022 was a very challenging year. Our challenge arose from the acquisition of Scientific Air in late 2021. With disinfection products that were substantially focused on one distributor, Scientific Air was also focused on one industry, which was hospitals, and with revenues totally driven by COVID-19. Consequently, sales collapsed for Scientific Air in 2020-22 as the pandemic receded. Unfortunately, our previous senior management's focus did not reposition the company to address this weakness at Scientific Air. Consequently, we recently determined that it was best to write down a substantial portion of our investment in Scientific Air and put this problem behind us. In addition to this non-cash write down of goodwill, the company has incurred and our 2022 financials include significant one-time integration and acquisition costs related to legal and accounting expenses associated with our more successful acquisitions. Included in our 22 expenses are other non-cash items such as depreciation, interest, and the is issuance of options to key employees. 2022 was indeed a very challenging year, but it was also a turnaround year. We are therefore starting 2023 with our company much better positioned to achieve significantly improved results. Of this, I am extremely optimistic. As a reminder, Applied UV has two operating segments, the pathogen elimination and disinfection segment, which includes the development, manufacture, and marketing of air and surface disinfecting systems, and the hospitality segment, which includes domestic manufacture of better mirrors and premium furniture specifically for hotels, resorts, and related properties. Now I'd like to take a more detailed review of our hospitality segment. In hospitality, Munworks is resuming its pre-pandemic growth as this industry continues to show strong growth fueled by the post-pandemic travel surge, which has accelerated faster than generally forecasted. This market growth has heightened the need for hotels to make capital improvements to facilities in order to maintain their franchise flags, something that was postponed for almost three years due to the pandemic. Hotel operators are now required to catch up on delayed refurbishment. In the last few months, we had several hotel developers place multi-million dollar orders with our company. This surging demand coupled with our newly acquired 100,000 square foot manufacturing facility located in Brooklyn, New York, has given us a strong competitive advantage due to the demand for domestic manufacturing by these hotel operators. The cost differential between China and domestic manufacturing has decreased considerably 
due to the 25% tariff, as well as other factors leading hotel management to favor U.S.-based manufacturing. Additionally, there is a significant fear of potentially higher tariffs because hotel developers are concerned with the ongoing negative dialogue between the U.S. and China, worrying that any potential conflict or even a threat of a conflict could result in more global supply chain disruptions as well as incremental and increased tariffs. These factors are driving more hotel operators to domestic manufacturing to mitigate supply chain delays and enable hotels to better manage project timelines and ultimately their revenue generation. Due to this shift and with very limited U.S. competition, we were able to raise prices significantly without displacing orders, which will result in margin expansion, which we expect to accelerate in the first half of 2023. As part of the Brooklyn facility acquisition, we inherited a number of lower margin products due to the fact that 50% deposits were paid in advance of our acquisition of the facility, but paid to prior owners of that business, leaving us with fulfilling those major hotel commitments without the benefit of the associated cash receipts. We delivered on those commitments, and all of our legacy orders have now been fulfilled. Our sales pipeline for hospitality, which is approximately $10 million today, with projects underway and slated in Cleveland, Washington, D.C., Indianapolis, Orlando, and Knoxville. We also plan to increase Munworks revenues through the installation of our pathogen elimination devices as an option into our hotel guest room furniture to be supplied to better hotels. Now let me discuss the pathogen elimination and disinfection segment of our business. The domestic UV disinfection market is expected to reach $9 billion in 2027. The CDC states that each year, oh, one in 25 patients gets a hospital-acquired infection, resulting in over 3 million serious infections and 100,000 deaths annually. This amounts to losses from contagious pathogens that cost the U.S. economy more than $270 billion, including lost productivity due to absenteeism. The recent CDC warning about the rapid spread of new and deadly drug-resistant superbugs, such as C. auris, coupled with the urgency for improvements in indoor air quality within HVAC systems, in order to control the spread of pathogens, will continue to drive adoption of many of our proven systems. Our recent acquisition of Puro and its technology further validates our long-term strategy for developing or acquiring the best technology to protect all of us from deadly pathogens. This strategy is not only correct, but is now firmly in, in place. Our technology helps keep people safe, but just as important, our technology protects and extends the shelf life of high-value agricultural products. With shortages and purchase restrictions, the resulting food insecurity being reported throughout the world, we have concluded that protecting food from, far, from farm to table is a high priority and a major opportunity for us. Currently, with 15 to 25 percent of shipped agricultural products lost to spoilage during transit to distribution centers and transfer to food retailers, our company, in a venture with Canon, Virginia, a unit of the Japanese company will soon introduce a proprietary air purification system that can be incorporated into shipping containers and long-haul refrigeration trucks, as well as <coughs> excuse me, distribution centers that we expect will significantly reduce food spoilage. This technology is the same photocatalytic oxidation system which we developed for NASA for use in the International Space Station. Our technology is not only currently being used to increase, <coughs> increase the shelf life for food, but we are already generating revenue in the cannabis industry and in wine storage, and we also expect to expand into the preservation of cut flowers during transit and display. 
we believe that our focus on food security is as urgent as is health care and is also one of the highest investment priorities in the world today. We plan on growing our revenues in post-harvest food security by leveraging our success with our Aeroside product line because we have already demonstrated the reduction of food, spoilage of high-value fruit and berries with global companies such as Del Monte, Dole, Whole Foods, and others. Two months ago, we completed the acquisition of Pure Lighting as well as LED supply. As a result, we are forecasting total revenues of approximately 45 to $50 million this, <coughs> excuse me, for this current year, approximately a 100% increase over 2022. This further positions Applied UV as a fully integrated company, providing a broad pathogen elimination platform with leading technology that can be used by consumers, business, and governments. At this point, I want to also reiterate that I personally agree with the recent projection by a major investment bank and research analyst that our common share price will likely reach $2.50 by the end of this current year. Our primary focus for growth in 2023 will be on food preservation, health care, and safe building systems, and will include the complete installation utilizing proprietary software and facilities HVAC systems, which will continually monitor indoor air quality. With the merger of Puro complete, our wholly owned subsidiary Sterilumin is gaining critical mass to address the ever-challenging and ever-changing <coughs> challenge of combating air and surface pathogens at hospitals for acquired infections, protecting businesses and their facilities and their employees and consumers who frequent the facilities. After long delays due to the COVID pandemic, Late in 2022, our company began a clinical trial with our Lumicide sink and drain disinfection product at the prestigious Mount Sinai Hospital in New York City. We expect to announce the results of this highly anticipated clinical trial in Q3 2023. To support our planned growth, we formed a scientific advisory board with renowned infectious disease scientists, as well as wine and food preservation experts. The company plans to have these experts speak at leading industry conferences and trade shows, as well as write publications in leading journals regarding the effectiveness of our pathogen elimination product. We plan to announce the details regarding this advisory board in the very near term. Our global distribution and strategic partnership expansion continued throughout 2022 with the company now boasting several established strategic manufacturing partnerships and alliances with Canon, Acuity Lighting, Johnson Controls, Ushio, Siemens, and Granger. Additionally, our pathogen elimination segment's global network has grown to include 89 dealers and distributors in 52 countries including Southeast Asia, with 47 sales agencies, as well as our having 19 U.S.-based sales personnel. Our global customers will now have access to our complete suite of research-backed and clinically proven best-in-class product, including photocatalytic oxidation, advanced UVC-activated carbon, far UV technology utilizing newly developed 222 nanometer wavelength radiation, as well as our new air monitoring and reporting software for use in smart building products. We recently announced a significant strategic manufacturing supply chain outsourcing agreement with Canon Virginia, a wholly owned subsidiary of Canon USA, one of the premier global advanced contract manufacturers. This agreement makes Canon the company's primary manufacturer and logistical partner for our entire suite of air purification solutions. Our joint teams continue executing on an accelerating plan to completely transfer our manufacturing to Canon during this current quarter. 
we will simultaneously close our existing manufacturing and distribution operations, yielding a significant reduction in our fixed G&A. We believe this partnership will translate into production and logistics cost savings that accelerate development of our next generation product by removing manufacturing execution risk and allowing the company more effectively scale and focus on advanced technology development and marketing. We've also recently expanded our relationship with Canon Japan to include Canon Financial Services as a partner, which allows our company to offer for the first time leasing and finance options for our product to our customers. With the Pure acquisition, we're obtaining PureNet software application, which will further differentiate our systems from those of our competitors. Through the introduction of PureNet proprietary systems, uh, our software will accelerate our in industry differentiation by adding IoT integration throughout our entire product portfolio with proven software that continually monitors and reports indoor air quality throughout an entire facility. PureNet has recently been installed into almost 100 surgical suites. Puro's HVAC system products allows us to competitively compete in one of the fastest growing air pathogen elimination marketing markets, <coughs> excuse me, offering complete systems with our proprietary air monitoring software, which is rapidly becoming a must-have in HVA systems. To conclude, 2023 will be a transformative and extremely positive year for AUVI. Now I would like to turn the call over to Brian Stern, president of Puro Lighting, allowing him to speak more about Puro and LED supply. Brian? Thank you, Max. This is Brian Stern. I was the CEO and co-founder of both LED Supply Co. and Puro Lighting. My new role as president of Puro Lighting and board director allows me to consolidate, integrate, and create a uniform vision for our air and surface disinfection technologies, which are made up of aeroside, scientific air, lumicide, and Puro Lighting. At Puro, our goal is to use this merger to leverage cross-selling opportunities and increase revenue per customer while also improving bottom line profitability for the division and the organization as a whole. I am proud to share that LED Supply Co., which I co-founded 14 years ago, has greatly expanded its business. And we now provide design services, lighting and technology distribution, OEM product development, after-sales service, and turnkey installations for new construction, renovation, and national account projects across the United States. Our reach has also expanded from just lighting and controls to include building technologies such as EV chargers, building automation systems, UV devices, and smart panels for low voltage irrigation gas and water metering. Our customers range from large developers to national energy service contractors, as well as lighting and electrical service providers. The merger with Applied UV allows us to realize many synergies with our LED supply co business. We're already enjoying the benefits of the merger as we have been able to start specifying Munworks mirrors and case, case goods product, products on a multitude of different projects. This has enabled us to provide our customers with a higher quality product with a better price point and improved gross margins for the company. And we recently announced a major $4.5 million contract with the X companies, the country's premier co-living rental property developer that has over $1 billion in planned construction. Moving on to Puro Lighting, which was founded in 2019 with the mission of using light technologies to improve health and wellness within buildings. Today, Pure Lighting has an offering that encompasses pathogen elimination and disinfection of HVAC systems, induct air applications, continuous air disinfection technologies, and surface disinfection technologies, which are primarily sold into healthcare, education, commercial facilities, and government spaces. We expect to announce in the very near future that we have renewed our agreements with one of the leading distributors to hospitals expanding our reach into healthcare with our PuroNet plus Hilo plus PuroProtect systems, which utilize far UV technology. 
With this agreement, we also expect to announce that our PureNet plus Kilo plus PureProtect UV disinfection control systems are, are scheduled to be installed in 16 operating rooms at a leading medical school. This renewed agreement should help Applied UV achieve greater penetration of the PureNet systems within the hospital segment serviced by this distributor. Hospitals currently utilizing the PureNet system include Mass General, University of Chicago Med, and Children's Mercy in Kansas City. Puro has continued to expand our business partnerships with a newly announced research partnership with Johnson Controls and Duccio. This partnership allows us to provide additional research on the safety and efficacy of far UV technologies. Additionally, we announced an expanded partnership with Acuity Brands to further expand our Puro Protect far UV portfolio of products. Next, I will turn the call over to Mike Riccio, our Chief Financial Officer, for a review of our financial results. Mike? Thanks, Brian. Net sales of 20.1 million represented an increase of 8.5 million, or 73% for the year ended December 31st, 2022, as compared to net sales of 11.6 million for the prior year. This improvement was primarily attributable to the hospitality segment with sales of $13.6 million, representing an increase of 7.7 million or 130% as compared to the prior year. This was largely due to the Vision Mark asset acquisition in Brooklyn, accounting for 6 million of the increase, plus the increase in sales in the legacy Munworks business of 1.7 million. The pathogen elimination and disinfection segment had sales of 6.5 million in 2022, which represented a 14% increase over the prior year. The pathogen elimination and disinfection markets have not yet fully rebounded from the initial buy-in during the early stages of the COVID pandemic. Additionally, due to macro market shifts, the company saw major global trends toward end-to-end -end systems across entire facilities that include software monitoring capabilities. This allows facilities to implement standards in the current EPA Clean the Air initiatives and guidelines announced in early 2022. These guidelines set the standards that are focused on improving indoor air quality, including indoor air ventilation in HVAC systems in all public places. With the shifting macro trends, the company altered its marketing, M&A, and R&D activities to address these changes. The Puro merger, coupled with the strategic manufacturing partnership with Canon, further addresses this shift. Gross profit was $4.0 million, which is approximately 20% of sales for the year ended December 31st, 2022, as compared to $4.1 million, or approximately 35% of sales for the prior year. Gross profit as a percentage of sales decreased primarily due to the higher sales mix of the hospitality segment. The hospitality segment sales for the year ended December 31st, 2022, were 68% of AUVI's total as compared to 51% for the prior year. Additionally, the hospitality segment's gross profit as a percentage of sales decreased year over year, largely due to the completion of projects that were in process when the company first acquired the assets of Vision Mark in Brooklyn, which is a non-recurring condition. The company is totally focused on streamlining both manufacturing and distribution operations across both segments. SG&A costs were $14.8 million for the year ended December 31st, 2022, which represented an increase of $3.5 million as compared to the prior year. This increase was primarily driven by the asset acquisitions of Vision Mark in Brooklyn in the hospitality segment in Q1 2022 and the asset acquisitions of Kess Science and Technology and Scientific Air in the pathogen elimination and disinfection segment at the end of Q3 and the beginning of Q4 in 2021. As a result, payroll and sales commission costs increased approximately $1.5 million, amortization costs increased approximately $1 million, marketing increased approximately $0.4 million, and rent and professional fees each increased approximately $0.5 million. The company anticipates efficiency gains in the coming year as all three acquisitions have now been fully integrated and synergies are being realized. 
The company had determined that a triggering event had occurred as a result of a settlement agreement with Scientific Air. A quantitative impairment test on the goodwill determined that the fair value was below the carrying value, and as a result, the company, the company recorded a full non-cash goodwill impairment charge of $1.1 million on the consolidated statements of operations for the year ended December 31st, 2022. We also evaluated potential triggering events that might be indicators that other intangibles related to scientific error were also impaired. As a result of our analysis, an additional non-cash impairment of intangibles of $5.9 million was also recorded in the consolidated statements of operations for the year ended December 31st, 2022. As a result of the scientific air settlement and the change in the values of the shares of stock returned to the company, the company recorded a net gain of $1.4 million in other income in the year ended December 31st, 2022. Other income in the year ended December 31st, 2022 also includes $205,000 for the employee retention tax credit. The company recorded a net loss of $16.6 million for the year ended December 31st, 2022, compared to a net loss of $7.4 million for the prior year. This increase of $9.2 million in, in the net loss was primarily due to the non-cash loss on impairment of goodwill and intangibles of $7.0 million and an increase in SG&A cost of $3.5 million, as previously, as previously explained. The loss per share, <clears throat> per common share, is $1.41 for 2022. If we exclude the impairment loss, the loss per common share is $0.86, cents, as compared to $0.86, cents, a loss of $0.86 cents in 2021, which is in line with the guidance given by a prominent investment banking research analyst. With the integration of the Puro merger rapidly progressing, coupled with the shifting of our entire supply chain, logistics, offshore manufacturing, and next generation product R&D to Canon, the savings and the reduction of duplicated expenses across all of our divisions is expected to equate to improvements in our SG&A, driving higher future earnings. Lastly, I would like to talk about the company's efforts to strengthen liquidity. On July 1st, 2022, the company filed a $50 million shelf registration on Form S3, which with the SEC, which allows for flexibility to raise funds as needed. Additionally, in December 2022, the company entered into a loan and security agreement with Pinnacle Bank, which provides for a $5 million secured revolving credit facility. At December 31st, 2022, the company had approximately $2.7 million of unrestricted cash available on its consolidated balance sheet. I will now turn the call back over to Max for closing remarks. Well, Thank you. Uh, let me um, let me just say that um, as the founder of Applied UV and recently taking on the role as the CEO, I'm absolutely committed to our success. 2022 was a tough year for all of us, but it was also a transformative year. We will continue to focus on our strategic priorities while at the same time tightening expenses across all of our businesses, aligning our resources, including cash, with current demand. I'm extremely optimistic about the outlook for both of our pathogen elimination and hospitality segments. We now have a great portfolio of highly effective product uh, that management, our management team and I truly believe will be strong levers for growth in 2023. Thank you again, everyone, for joining our call today. This includes our prepared remarks. The operator can now open the call for questions. Thank you. At this time, we will be conducting a question and answer session. If you would like to ask a question, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad. A confirmation tone will indicate your line is in the question queue. You may press star 2 if you would like to remove your question from the queue. For participants using speaker equipment, it may be necessary to pick up your handset before pressing the star keys. One moment, please, while we poll for questions. Thank you. Our first question is coming from Chip Moore with EF Hutton. You may proceed. Uh, good morning. Thanks, 
Hey, everybody. One, one to add one first, I guess, on visibility and comfort around that 45 to $50 million top line goal. Um, I think, Max, I heard you talk about sort of a near term pipeline of, of $10 million for Munworks Vision Mark. Uh, Vision Mark. Any other sense of pipeline for Puro LED and, and some of the other parts of the business? Well, Brian uh, Stern, why don't you respond to the pipeline for uh, Puro and LED, and then I can um, talk a bit more about why we're very comfortable about a 45 to $50 million a year. Sure. Um, so current pipelines for Puro and LED, Puro currently has roughly a $500,000 pipeline um, as of the end of uh, the last quarter. And uh, LED, roughly a $4.5 million pipeline um, with strong sales expectations uh, for the remainder of the year for both organizations. Um, so we feel very confident in the numbers uh, that are being portrayed, um, and hopefully we'll be able to meet those goals this year. The uh, chip, the uh, the backlog between all of our comp all of our businesses is in excess of uh, 15 uh, million uh, at the end of the first quarter last week. Uh, we uh, we know what the uh, outlook is in the near term because we're quoting uh, a significant number of jobs and the percentage of conversion of quotes to actual orders to actual receipts uh, gives us a great deal of comfort that we will hit that 45 to million 45 to 50 million uh, and we'll we there, there's even a, a reasonable expectation that will exceed that. We have a, a uh, uh, we have great expectation that there are several very large multi-million dollar projects that we've been working on throughout 2022 that uh, we will get actual POs for this current quarter. So I'm, I'm uh, the metrics, the backlog, the uh, RFQs that we're dealing with uh, give us that that comfort. I hope I've answered your question. No, that's very helpful, Max. I appreciate it. Um, and I guess like, around hospitality specifically, um, I guess capacity there, you know, with Brooklyn, and then I think you talked about uh, getting through those lower margin orders. How should we think about that margin ramp for hospitality, I guess specifically, uh, you know, over the next few quarters uh, throughout the year? Prior to the pandemic, Munworks was running uh, at margins in excess of, uh, in, in the low to mid-30s. We expect to be back to those margin levels. Now that we've completed the uh, projects that were undertaken during the acquisition of the Brooklyn facility, which, as I explained, 50% uh, of the proceeds were turned over to the prior owners, which we didn't enjoy. So the 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 uh, margins are, are uh, I, I think are, are, are pretty are pretty much uh, uh, established historically. But but I will tell you the the uh, problem that we'll have if we're going to exceed the um, forecast is a labor shortage and we're working diligently with with New York City uh, agencies to train at their expense uh, employees as much of this country has already experienced getting get, getting decent uh, employees with some skills is really the challenge today it isn't the facility it isn't the nine million dollars worth of equipment that we acquired with this facility it's really uh, it's really employees. We're on uh, overtime right now, working on several large product projects. Uh, we're just about to receive a three to four million dollar order from a European hotel developer for a major hotel refurbishment and rebranding in Washington D.C. 
so the challenge is going to be labor, not machinery, not the facility, not raw materials. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a problem that is solvable, but um, mm -hmm. it is an issue to deal to, uh, in response to your question about where our capacity constraints are. Got it. That's very helpful. Um, and then another one on around the the, the Canon relationship and uh, this outsourcing agreement. You know, transferring that this current quarter. I, right, we're pretty much through it, I guess, the current quarter. But um, how to think about uh, one-time costs or you know double costs and things like that, and when that sort of normalizes and, and maybe might be more for you any sense of you know SG&A some of the implications there. We, we've uh, furloughed a significant number of employees in the legacy manufacturing business in uh, Kennesaw outside of Atlanta. Uh, we have very little duplicate SG&A because uh, the contract with Canon has them uh, invoicing and charging us at shipment. So we have a variable f cost structure rather than a fixed cost structure uh, in Atlanta currently. Uh, we're already seeing benefits in reduction of uh, payroll and uh, other SG&A in Atlanta. It, that's not uh, an issue that uh, is going to be a negative. Got it. Okay, thanks, Max. Um, and just uh, one last one for me on sort of New product development. I think you talked about going after the, uh, you know, shipping and, and uh, potentially distribution center market more on the on the food spoilage side. I, you know, how, when should we think about that, and how are you going to attack that that market, and how do you see that opportunity? Well, the to, to give you a very short science answer, photocatalytic oxidation, which we're probably leaders in likely leaders in that technology because we, we, we've we been running it for years and it, it's it's the uh, system that's in the uh, uh, International Space Station and it was a science developed for NASA, removes ethylene from the air. And it removes ethylene from the air, our aerosol product removes ethylene from the air utilizing photocatalytic oxidation. Ethylene happens to be the chemical in the uh, in the air that uh, accelerates food spoilage. So photocatalytic oxidation removes ethylene very effectively and converts it to water vapor and CO2, which are both naturally occurring in the uh, in the atmosphere. So our systems, when they're in a refrigerated truck or in a refrigerated sea container, bringing fruit, uh, berries flowers from South and Central America and even from California to the East Coast removes ethylene. It significantly increases the shelf life of a valuable post-harvest product. It's a proven science. We're working with Canon uh, to, to uh, there are, we've, we've had two sea containers delivered to the uh, yard at Canon in, uh, in Virginia, and we're uh, working on installing our systems in order to show um, large sea container companies such as Maersk uh, that uh, our system will significantly reduce the spoilage that they're currently responsible for while they transport high-value post-harvest product. We're doing uh, a side-by-side -side video with and without our system our system in one container and nothing in the other container. Both will be loaded with berries and bananas and other high value uh, fruit and vegetables uh, and show what happens over a, an average four to five day transit time in each of those containers. We know from existing science, uh, science that's been proven in laboratories and tests at the University of California, Davis, and in uh, the videos that are available on YouTube by an Israeli company who's working on the same uh, issue, 
but they're dealing with packaging, which we're not, shows that in the video specifically that I'm referencing, that bananas turn dark brown in four days in transit without uh, uh, photocatalytic photo oxidation uh, and will last over uh, eight to ten days with it. So we know the science is there. We're going to prove it. We're going to bring it to the large shipping container companies. Uh, Del Monte, for example, has already installed our systems in a two million square foot refrigerated warehouse uh, in Atlanta uh, where they bring uh, uh, food in from the West Coast for redistribution. Uh, the, uh, Merck turns out to be a client of Canon, so we've got a, an entree to that introduction. Interesting. The Supplemax, and maybe if I could speak one last one um, around sort of sales synergies uh, from the recent deals. I, I think you talked about, you know, Munworks getting some traction, uh, you know, outside of the traditional hotel market via that relationship. Is that, how do you see that synergy opportunity, and is that potentially additive to that outlook, or, or is that contemplated within there? It's not in our numbers yet. Uh, you, yeah. You're referring to the inclusion of aeroside into uh, guest room furniture so that uh, the hotel can sell a pure air uh, room uh, with the best science? Is that what you're referring to? Yeah, yeah. Any synergy. So that and also just the ones you're seeing now in terms of pull through of uh, Munworks uh, as well into some of the some newer channels. Well, yeah, that, that's, that's an obvious one. The more near term, and the one that we've already uh, seen uh, purchase orders for, um, LED supply has received, as Brian Stern mentioned, the uh, $4.5 million in orders for its systems. Included in that order is the first of uh, at least four uh, projects that Puro has paper on. The first one alone is for five that involves Moonworks is for about just in excess of $500,000 worth of our backlit hotel mirrors to the uh, multifamily uh, uh, development uh, that LED has uh, purchased with us for. Moonworks is currently not in the multifamily space, but recently we've received a uh, uh, almost $600,000 order from the related companies, which is the largest uh, real estate developer in the country, uh, for uh, medicine cabinets, which we make, which we manufacture, uh, electrified med medicine cabinets that not only act as mirrors but as lighting, and and uh, obviously as medicine cabinets. And what LED is bringing to us is their extensive relationship with multifamily uh, rental and multifamily condo developers that uh, must supply a vanity and a medicine cabin in every apartment, if not several. So we're now uh, seeing business coming from that direction, none of which existed prior to last quarter. That's great. Um, okay, I appreciate all the color. I'll take the rest of mine offline. Thanks. Thank you. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, if you have any remaining questions or comments, please press star 1 on your phone at this time. Okay. As there are no further questions in queue at this time, I will turn the call back over to management for our closing remarks. Well, I think, um, I think we've made our optimistic uh, statements very clear. Um, I want to thank everyone for supporting our company, and we're looking forward to a very successful 2023. Thank you. This concludes today's conference, and you may disconnect your lines at this time, and we thank you for your participation.